Welcome to another video showing you how to get the top grades. Question four of paper two is a tough one. It's the question that I've spent longest thinking about and I'm going to show you the result of that because it's great. It is a really simple solution. That doesn't mean it's easy to do. It's going to be hard but conceptually it's easy. It's just hard work because you are going to write a lot. Let me explain. So the question will always ask you to compare and it will ask you to compare the whole of both texts. So it's demanding because you've got to read both texts quite quickly and that's a lot of time taken out of your exam. And that's why I'm going to suggest that you spend a maximum of 24 minutes writing your answer and you might have to steal some reading time from some of the other questions. I'll put the timings to this exam in a separate video, but 24 minutes maximum writing. Okay, the examiners claim they also want you to identify methods, we'll get on to what those mean, and they also want you to put in references or quotes. So you can talk about things that are happening in the passage, or you can quote directly, Quotes don't earn more marks than references, okay? So, I mean, I find it easier to quote, but you might find it easier just to say what's going on. Okay, so what does earn the marks? Now, to find this out, I've gone to AQA's secret website. I say it's secret, you can find it, you just can't get on it. So it's only available to schools, not to parents, not to tutors, not to students. Okay, I've got beef with that, obviously, but... I've got on for you and I've read hundreds of answers and from those hundreds of answers with the hundreds of marks that senior examiners have given, I've worked out what gets the marks. Let's check it out. First up, the most important thing by far is the number of explanations you write. Now, the easiest way to write an explanation is to say this implies and then tell us what it implies or this suggests, this shows, I'm just going to use implies all the way through. Any way that you can say it implies something is an explanation, is a mark, as long as it's linked to a quote or a reference, okay? All right, that's quite interesting, okay, I just have to write loads of explanations. Now this really shocked me, at every grade, so from grade three, four, five, six, all the way up to nine, this is the average I saw. So individuals would be able to do differently, but on average, at every grade, every time you wrote 26 words, you tended to write enough to get a mark. And so this is a super difficult part of the skill, because if you want 10 marks, you have to write 260 words, yeah, on average. So writing speed is going to be super crucial to you, and you've got to blitz it. The good thing is, if you write something that's rubbish, the examiner never takes a mark off. Yeah, they only mark the stuff that gains marks. So if you're thinking, oh no, I've got to put it in the best words, but you don't. If you're thinking, oh, I'll write this idea down, it's rubbish, I'll, get, I'll lose marks. You won't. Yeah, you only get marks for the stuff that you write that's right. You never get any marks taken away. So that's an area with AQA where I don't have beef. Thank you, AQA. All examples are like that, by the way. They credit you with marks, they don't take them away. Right, the number of references. So I would have thought that the more quotes I have, the more evidence I have, that's gonna link really closely to the marks. Well, it turns out not. So yes, you want to quote, but you might quote something and write more than one explanation. Then it will get more than one mark. So it's not as closely linked to the number of quotes. Then you might think, well, there's three bullet points in this exam and they ask you to have quotes and they ask you to have methods. Surely the methods are super important. No, the examiners aren't really fussed about the number of methods. So let's imagine you have 10 explanations and you've only mentioned three methods. The exam board are going to say, oh, this light on methods, we're marking you down, pal. No, they'll just say, oh, well, they've got some methods. Yeah, so name the methods where you can, but if you can't name the method, chill. But don't chill, because you're writing like mad, aren't you? 26 words. Okay, 
Here are the obvious ones. Simile, metaphor, contrast, vocabulary choices. So the word choice that they use, it's going to be emotive in some way, positive or negative. Alliteration comes up all the time, but actually anything is a method. So anything that you say the writer is doing, so if the writer is emphasizing, then although that's not a literary technique, the examiners will go, yeah, cool, that's a method. We're all right about that. So chill about method. Name it every time you spot one, but if you can't spot one, write the explanation anyway. And what's the explanation about? It's what the writer's viewpoint is. Yeah, so here's my quote. That implies blah, blah, blah about the writer's viewpoint. You'll just get a mark. It's as simple as that. Okay, how many comparisons do you need? Like you've got two texts, do you have to say one thing about one text and then compare it and then go back to the first text and compare it, back to the first text and compare it? No, this is a sneaky trick and I love this trick. So I recommend it, okay? You can just write all about source A for half of your time. So let's imagine I've got 24 minutes, 12 minutes, just writing about the writer's viewpoint in source A. Explain, explain, explain. Quote, explain, quote, explain, quote, explain, quote, explain. 12 minutes, right? Then I go, in contrast, that's my comparison, in source B, the writer believes, quote, explain, quote, explain, quote, explain, quote, explain, another 12 minutes, kaboom, I've finished. So really, the examiner will say, ah, oh, right, everything that comes afterwards, they're all contrasts, they're all comparisons. And so rather than it just being one comparison, you might have five or six or however many. So you only have to do that once. You can do it loads of times, yeah? But the easiest way is, I'm just gonna blitz through one text for half my time, then in contrast, blitz through the other text. And because you'll be looking at the same viewpoints or the same topics with different viewpoints, because they'll obviously give you text where the writers have different viewpoints, you will inevitably be comparing. Like it will be impossible not to compare. So that is another element of chill, which I really like about this question. Thank you, AQA. Now, students always ask me, how many paragraphs, sir? And this is interesting. So there isn't an answer to how many. Um, so, and it will be dependent on how fast you can write, won't it? So someone who can write faster than you is gonna write more paragraphs. They're gonna get more marks. It's just the way it goes. However, paragraphs matter up to grade seven. So what paragraph structure gets you to grade seven? It is the Peel paragraph structure, which I will explain. You make your point. So you're saying what the writer is, what their viewpoint is, what they're doing. Then you give an example, which is going to be a reference or a quote. And then you explain using implies. What's the L? The L is language analysis. So if you zoom in on a particular word, and then say what that implies, so you've got two implies in your paragraph, then you're going to get the extra mark. The examiners then really get excited. So let's say you've written nine explanations, but some of them are in Peel paragraphs. The examiners are more likely to say, oh, let's, oh, I wanna give this kid 10 marks instead of nine. It's only worth the extra mark, yeah, by writing in Peel paragraphs. But up to grade seven, you will earn an extra mark if you've got some Peel paragraphs, on average, like not always. Um, so if you're really into paragraphs, which I'm not, but most teachers insist on loads of particular rules about paragraphs. So if you're into the paragraph structure, Peel will do it for you. So your point, your evidence, your explanation, then your zoom in on another word with another explanation. Now, you might have noticed I've said use implies both times. When the examiner say, oh, this student's an idiot, they only know the word implies. No, the examiner won't care. You can change it, you can have suggests or reveals or, you know, knock yourself out, it doesn't matter. But what I'm trying to say is, it's the skill of spotting something else to say about the viewpoint that gets the marks, not whether you've used particular vocabulary. I just recommend implies because it forces you, or me if I'm doing the exam, to write another explanation, the other explanation is going to get a mark. But beyond grade seven, that doesn't work. I'll tell you why. 
it takes a lot of effort to zoom in on an extra word in a quote. Yeah, you have to find two things to say about the quote to do this. But what if you just find a new quote and say something new about it? That can be much, much easier. And so top candidates at grade eight and nine don't write in peel paragraphs. It takes too long. What they do instead is they look for more quotes to write explanations on. So really, you've got to make a decision based on your ability in English. Are you the kind of student who can read through the passage and find lots of different quotes and therefore explain lots of different things? Or will you struggle to find quotes and therefore prefer to take a select number of quotes and write two explanations by zooming in on individual words? You make your pick. However, if you're aiming for above grade seven, then it's the word total that's going to kill you. You're going to run out of words by doing peel paragraphs, I suspect. Some of your paragraphs will be peel, but the majority won't. Now, there isn't a rule. Like, you know, the examiner isn't going to say, oh, you've written too many peel paragraphs. Now I'm ditchy. I'm not giving this a mark. Yeah, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about your ability to keep flipping writing for 24 minutes and write enough explanations to get the marks. So you have to choose the method that will make that easiest for you. I hope you want to see what that looks like. So I'm gonna jump over onto the computer screen and show you. This was a nine mark answer out of 16, and it has that technique that I told you about, putting in contrast midway through, writing first about the first source, and then everything you write in contrast afterwards will be treated as a comparison or a difference. So you only have to do that once. You don't have to, as you'll see in the next answer. The other thing I've done is italics connote every single explanation. So you can see how many explanations there are in the student's writing. If you're the sort of person who wants to know how many paragraphs, well, four paragraphs is going to get you nine marks out of 16, which is going to be touching grade seven. The other thing I want you to notice is the stuff that I have put in yellow. So this is varied vocabulary to introduce each explanation. This is where you could just write this implies. Now you don't have to write this implies, okay? But the reason I've given that to you as a method to think through is if you think, right, I need to write this implies 16 times to get my marks. And that's an easier thing to keep in your head then I've got to use 16 versions of emphasize, portrays, shows, conveys, reveals, suggests, and so on. Yeah, that's too much to hold in your head. However, this is a more fluent way of writing, so by all means do that, but you don't get any extra marks for being fluent. If you simply wrote each explanation with this implies, you would get just as many marks. Now, if we jump ahead to a 14 mark answer, that would be a grade nine, we can see the student has a very slightly different technique. So here we have one paragraph about source A and then one paragraph about source B. Next, another paragraph about source A and then a contrast about source B. This is also about source B and then this is a contrast from source A. So we can see this student has got two paragraphs comparing there, two paragraphs comparing here, and two paragraphs comparing here. You can see that under exam pressure, they had a lot to write about in the first comparison, then slightly less in the second, and slightly less in the third. The examiners don't mind that, they're just looking at how many explanations you have in order to convince them. Again, in yellow, I've highlighted the words that the student has used instead of this implies, but you can see how many explanations there are in each paragraph, roughly two, sometimes three. So that's a better way to think about paragraphing, in my opinion, two explanations per paragraph, rather than a set number of paragraphs or comparisons. When I did my analysis, I found that 14 explanations ended up giving us 14 marks. This student managed to do it with 23 words per mark. They were obviously highly skilled, but the exam board only gave me one example 
or the student who had managed to get full marks. I'm going to show you that very briefly, but the important thing to remember is this student got 14 marks, writing only 323 words. I say only because the only answer they've given us that got 16 marks is more than a page of A4 typed, and it took this student 406 words, which was 25 words per mark. And this student also needed to come up with 20 explanations in order to get the 16 marks. That just tells me that most students never get beyond 14 marks in this exam. And also, the examiners have a super high standard for you to get higher. It's not realistic to expect most of you to write 400 words in the time limit you've got for this question. But by all means, freeze the screen and take a look at what a full mark answer looks like. Now, the next video is question five. How do you plan to get top grades? Check it out if you'd like to know.